Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do multi mic recording or multi channel recording to one track or one item in Reaper. Now, before we get started, the purpose of using one track or one item to record many different sources, whether it be multi mic drums, piano, guitars, or pretty much anything, is for simplicity. It's obviously easier to edit one item on one track when it's all based on one performance. But I wouldn't suggest this technique if you want to edit the individual channels separately from each other afterwards. Like if you want to dynamic split a track to get rid of leakage, or if you wanted to shift the timing of any of the channels compared to another channel. It makes it more complicated than necessary and more trouble than it's worth. So in those cases, watch my other video, multi-channel recording using multiple tracks. But if you want to keep things simpler and all on one track or in one item, this is the method I would use. Let's say you're recording live drums. I have a bunch of tracks right here already set up for each input. We have a kick, snare, snare bottom, a couple of toms, a pair of overheads, and a pair of rooms. So we could record them right to their own individual track, like this. But like I said, it might be simpler or more convenient to have this on one track or as one item. Let's undo that recording. And instead, let's make a new track. We'll put it on the top and we'll name it Drums. So now we're going to record all our drums to this one track. Because in Reaper, we can do that. Let's go to our preferences and look at our mic inputs. Go to Audio and go right down here. Here's where the mics are plugged in. I didn't use input one or two, so I started on mic three with our kick, our snare, toms, a pair of overheads, and a pair of rooms. And the last mic is a snare bottom. I put it separate to make it easier to deal with stereo pairs. This way the overheads are seven and eight, and the rooms are nine and 10. This way it's not an odd pair. So now we'll go to our drum track over here, go to routing, and set our track channels to 10 tracks right here. Now we're only recording nine inputs, but in Reaper, we have to do this in pairs. So we'll record 10 and just ignore the last one. Set up our inputs right here, choose 10 channel, and then go down here. This is going to be input 1 through 10. This would be 2 through 11, and this is 3 through 12, which is where our mics were plugged in. Right over here, 3 through 12. Remember, we're not using the 12th one, but we're still recording it. So we'll choose this as our input. Now let's see if we're getting input on this track. We'll switch our monitoring mode so we can hear it, take these tracks out of record, and put this track in record. So let's see if we're getting signal. We're hearing the drums, but the kick is in the left speaker and the snare is in the right speaker. We're only hearing two tracks. But if you look over here at our metering, we're actually seeing them all. Let's switch the layout to make it easier to see. Let's choose full meter. And now let's look at it. We can see all the tracks, but we're just hearing the kick out of the left speaker and the snare out of the right speaker. And that's because if we check our routing, we're hearing the master parent sent, which is output one and two. Let's turn this off. And now we should hear nothing, even though we're still getting signal over here. So now we need a way to send each channel to their own track. This way we could hear them and treat them separately. So let's send each channel to their own track. We'll drag from here to our kick. Make sure you're using pre-fader sends, not post-fader sends. In fact, by default, Reaper has it set up as post-fader. 
just change it here in the preferences. This way they'll be pre-fader when we set them up. So let's send from here to here, drag and drop it. It's pre-fader, full volume. And let's choose what channel is sent. We'll change it right here to mono and just our first channel, which is our kick. So if we choose this, just the kick mic is gonna to go to this track. Now the reason we're using these tracks is because they're already set up. They're already named. I have level on each, check the mixer. They're already mixed how you want them. And I have effects on each one. So I already have my drum sound set up on these tracks. Now I just wanna monitor the drums on those tracks. So right now we should hear the kick coming out of this track. And we are. So let's do the same thing for the other tracks. Drag this one to the snare, switch it to mono channel two. And now the snare should be coming out of this track. And it is. So let's do the rest. For snare bottom, if you remember, we use the ninth channel because it's mono. Then for the tom, we use three. For the floor tom, we used four. For the overheads, we're gonna use stereo because the stereo pair going to one track. So we'll use five and six. And for the room mics, we'll do the same thing, except we're gonna use seven and eight. So now our drums are coming in on this track, but they're being sent to these tracks. Let's hear it. Perfect. So now we're ready to record our drums onto just one track. Now we have one track with 10 channels and our media item has 10 channels as well. So this will also make it simpler for dealing with takes. Let's record another take of the drums. Now we have two takes of our drums. Let's do one more pass. Now we have three takes of our drums. But because they're on one track or one item, they can be easier to work with. Let's zoom in. So now if we want to comp this performance, we would split it by sections. Here, maybe here. Here and here. We could choose our takes just by clicking on them. Let's say we chose take one here, then take two, take three, back to take two, back to take one. We could hear it just like this. And if we're happy with that, and that's going to be our comp, just right click it, go to take and choose lock to active takes. Now it's locked, so we can't change our takes. And if we don't wanna see them all, turn off the option, show all takes and lanes. Then it looks like this. We still see the take up here. Take one, take two, take three, take two, take one. Let's get rid of this piece. And we can clean up our edits by zooming in, and fixing them. Make sure it sounds good. And if we're happy with that, this could be our keeper drum performance. And we can keep it on its own track like this. Now, because we're editing in the arrangement window, we don't need to see these tracks. These are just for monitoring and mixing. So we can go to our track manager. Here's our tracks. Take these tracks out of the track control panel. 
So they only show up in the mixer right here. So here's where we mix the drums, and here's where we edit them. But we don't need the drum track in the mixer. This fader doesn't do anything. If we turn it down, we still hear our drums. So we don't need this fader in the mixer. So if we go back to our track manager, we can take the drum track out of the mixer, and it doesn't show up in the mixer anymore. So we have a tracks right here for mixing, and we have one track for editing. And it'll work on any multi-track source, not just drums. A lot of times I'm doing piano, and I'll put six or eight mics on the piano, or I'm recording an electric guitar, and I have three or four mics on the cabinet. So this is a different and sometimes simpler way of dealing with those situations. But if you do plan on editing the different channels separately, check out my other video. Multi-channel recording using multiple tracks. So anyway, this is multi-mic recording or multi-channel recording to one track or one item in Reaper. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.